So in the previous video, we took a look at inline load balancing, where we basically set up the load balancing feature on the ESG to allow the communication to happen. So one of the things we're going to go do is I'm going to go over here and take a look at the networking and security portion of things. I'm going to go over here to NSX edges. And one of the things that we had to do on the ESG underneath the routing and then redistribution is I had these two turned off because we were do also doing NAT. And in order to do one-armed load balancing, at least the way that I've tested it, is to not have NAT enabled. So there's probably other ways that you can do it, but this is how I have figured out how to implement it. So essentially what I have going on, and I'll do a quick little whiteboard session so everybody understands. If you've been following along with the series so far, then you're already familiar with this, but if you're not, I have an edge services gateway set up here, and then I have a DLR sitting down here. The DLR has a couple of logical switches. Up to the ESG, I have a CSR1000V that is deployed, providing my connectivity up to my core switch. Between here and here, I'm running BGP. Between here and here, I'm running OSPF. Because I'm running two different protocols, I need to redistribute mutually between the two. So in order for OSPF to learn, or for, in order for BGP to learn OSPF routes, I'm redistributing, uh, OSPF is learning routes from BGP, and BGP is learning routes from OSPF. So I've got going, what they refer to as mutual redistribution, if it, those of you that are familiar with the Cisco world. It's a single box, so we don't have to worry about routing loops, so it's a simple deployment. With that being said, this is where we are currently at, and this needs to be in play because what we're going to do with the one-arm load balancer is we have a connection that we're going to set up that is going to allow us to connect into another edge services gateway. So the ES, and we're going to deploy another edge services gateway here. This ESG is going to be deployed down here and is going to be plugged into, is going to have a single connection to one of the logical switches over here. So this guy right here, this, this interface right here is going to be given an IP address. So for example, uh, we have the 1.0 and we have 2.0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a interface IP address on him of say dot two five four and then what I will do on this ESG is I will set up load balancing capabilities on him so if I'm out here on the network let's say let's say my PC and I want to connect to either one of the web servers what I'm actually going to do switch my color over to, to yellow green is I'm going to send my traffic in here and I'm going to point it to this interface IP address which is going to be .254. Then from the Edge Services Gateway, it's going to open up connections to the different web servers that are there. And then that information is going to get sent back to me, to my PC. And so I will have IIS connections show up or web pages show up on my desktop or inside of my web browser, which is telling me that the ESG is working appropriately for one arm, one arm load balancer. A one arm load balancer means that we have a single ESG deployed with a single interface. And that interface is tied into the same subnet that the devices are, so the web servers. So let's go ahead and actually go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. So now you understand what we're trying to accomplish here. We want to make sure that routing is squared away first and foremost. That, that That's a big deal. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do I'm going to back this up a little bit. I'm going to come back over here to my hosts and clusters, and I'm going to take a look at host 4. I have basically about 4 gigs of RAM left and plenty of CPU. So that means I should have enough space in order to deploy another ESG. I'm going to come down here to networking and security, NSX edges. I'm going to say add ESG. The details of this guy are going to be dc one esg 2 one armed LB, copy and paste that name down here, click on next. I'm going to go ahead and admin is the username and I'm going to set password 
one, two, three, four. And again, we come down here, enable SSH access, auto rule generation is fine for the automatically generating firewall rules. We're gonna deploy a compact deployment, 500 megs of RAM, one CPU. We're gonna go ahead and add edge appliance. We're going to put this in the management cluster in the only data store that I have available on the only host that I have available in that cluster. I could add more, but I'm choosing not to. I'm gonna click on add, click next, and then we're gonna add a interface. So this will be an uplink and I'm gonna call this the LVM three and four. Actually, no, I'll call this uh, one armed LB. And we're gonna go associate this to the con one. I can change this later. Actually, no, I wanna, let me double check what interfaces that actually is. Go ahead and log in real quick to this guy. Cause I don't remember off the top of my head what specific, go back over to hosts and clusters and then click on win VM one and it's 5002 DLR con one. DLR con one, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. And we're gonna give this guy an IP address. I'm gonna go ahead and the IP address that these guys have is 172.29.1.15 and 16 respectively. I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy, since it's a slash 24 subnet, 172.29.1.254 slash 24. Click on okay. And then I'm going to click next, because it's an uplink, it's the only connection I wanna have or need. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, I can set a default gateway on the VNIC of one arm load balancer. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to be 172.29.1.1. Um, because that's gonna be the subnet that we're connected to is one. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that because that's gonna be my gateway. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. And firewall, I'll go ahead and do what I gotta do. And click next and then finish. So now it's gonna go ahead and deploy another edge services gateway. That ESG will get deployed right here. As we can see, DC1, ESG2, one arm LB-0. Once this is done being deployed, we will go through and configure the load balancing services, getting that squared away. So that'll take just a couple of moments to go actually go out and do. So I will go ahead and pause while this process is underway. All right, so it looks like everything looked up pretty well, and we got this little uh, little error that said there were insufficient resources um, to meet the reservations, which I thought was kind of funny. So I opened this up real quick, and I'm gonna log in and authenticate. And I mean, it's, it looks like it's working. So I'm gonna come back over here at NSX Edges. I'm gonna click on this guy right here. And as we can see, everything's looking pretty good. So if we go down to configure, <laughs> excuse me, uh, interfaces, everything's looking pretty good. So the, the first test would be for me to test if I can connect to, oh, well, I forgot I had that ping going. Haha, <laughs> uh, ping 172.29.1.254. And that's a really good sign. If I can ping it, that means that A, I'll be able to reach it. Let me go ahead over here to load balancer and we're gonna go ahead and set up the load balancer. So the process of doing this is actually pretty straightforward. So we've already done the routing bits and I'll recap that here in a minute. We're, we've deployed the ESG. What I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna edit the load balancer config. And we're going to turn it on. But like I said in the previous video with inline load balancing, in order for me to really test this stuff out, I don't want to deal with acceleration because that's layer seven. If you have acceleration turned off, if you turn acceleration on, then it's going to downgrade the load balancer to do layer four inspection only. I'm gonna do that. Then the next step, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna be the application profile. I'm gonna add an application profile. I'm gonna call this one here just the uh, one armed dash LB app profile. Something very simple. TCP is the application we're gonna be working with. I'm gonna click on add. Then I wanna go over to my pools. My pools, I'm gonna go ahead and add a pool. The name of the pool is gonna be 
one armed LB dash whoops armed dash LB dash pool something very very obvious right we're gonna do round robin and everything else is looking pretty good this transparent option that you see right here this transparent option means not am I going to expose the client to the server it's actually the other way around where remember when we looked at the the servers and we saw that the IP address if I was to pull up one of my VMs here let's look at this if we scroll up a little bit here you can see that when we were doing our one arm load balancer we could see that we had this inbound connection coming in from 172.29.11.1 this means that the server that's responding to the web request from the load balancer sees the request coming from the load balancer itself it doesn't see the traffic coming in from the client if you click the transparent button which I'm going to go ahead and do it actually exposes the server to the original IP address of the host that's requesting that particular web request we're going to see what that looks like here in just a minute click on members I'm going to add the members in here I'm going to jump back over here to this guy and he is 15 and he is 16 just like that we're making sure that we have the right IP address in here the name of this guy here is going to be SRV1 and the IP address is going to be 172.29.1.15 and we're going to check on port 80 the monitor port will be 80 weight will be 1 click on OK and repeat said process one more time so it's SRV 172 we'll grab that IP and because of the fact that I've already deployed this on the inline load balancer a lot of the same features and capabilities are showing up I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK there and add so now I have my application profile now I have my pool my service monitoring again I'm not going to play with that right now I'm just trying to get through some of the basics because now I have load balancing set up for both and I'm gonna once I get the uh, one arm load balancer done, we'll take a look at some of the other options and actually disable some capabilities and take a look at some of the more advanced features and stuff like that. The next one I'm going to have to go do is the virtual server. So this is where we're actually going to point traffic to. Virtual server name, one arm load balancer is the profile we're going to do. We are going to enable acceleration. The name of this guy will be one armed dash LB and the description obviously where it's at we're going to use 172.29.1.254 as the IP address that we're going to point towards for HTTP connections the default pool will be the one arm load balancer pool click on add and that ladies and gentlemen is all that we need to have I'm going to go jump over to my DNS server real quick and I'm going to add in I have ESG2 here right I'm going to add in here right click I'm going to go add new host. I'm going to call this the DC1 one, one, one armed LB will be the name of it and that's going to be 172.29.11.254. Add host. And because the oh, I'm sorry, wrong IP address. Done. So let me go ahead and adjust the IP address here. Properties, the IP address is actually going to be dot one. Apply. Oh, that's because I'm goofing up and I keep putting in the wrong IP. 172.29, apply. And I don't have a, so what is that warning keeps popping up saying that I don't have a reverse lookup zone because I don't have one in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add one. I'm going to say new zone, next 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 and I'm gonna put in here 172.29.1 click next next finish there we go and go back to my entries here right click properties and now I should have the associated pointer record associated alright so now that that's done I should be able to pull up nope I wanna do open up telnet and I'm gonna go ahead and add in DC1-1 armed LB. I'm going to go ahead and put in here the IP address of 172.29.1.254 and save. 
and open. I'm going to accept that. I'm going to log in as admin and my password. And I'm going to go ahead and bump up the the appearance on this to be something a lot higher so even I can read it. Apply. Boom. All right. So if we were to do a show services load balancer for session, well, we'll just do this, right? We're going to see some connectivity going on here, which is what we want to see. So we're looking pretty good. What I'm going to go ahead and do, we have a weighted round robin, meaning that the weight is set for these guys and the forwarding, it says masquerade. If we look at this guy, we can see that the We don't have any active sessions. Let's actually pull some of this information back a little bit. And it's masquerading as well. So cool. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up a tab here. And I'm going to plug in here 172.29.1.254. And if I've done everything correctly, I should start to see IIS connectivity here momentarily. So let's go ahead and bring this down just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and take a look at connectivity wise. That should be responding by now. Okay, what did I miss? Did I miss something? Oh, the pool's wrong. Let me go ahead here and edit this. The pool is incorrect. That's what I forgot to set. The pool is wrong. Scroll down to the pool. Well, it's the right pool. Save. Why is that set up that way? Pools. Yes, so I have the one armed virtual server. Let me go ahead and delete that guy real quick. Yes. Something's not right. The, the, it's calling the wrong pool. Let me go ahead and add that back in real quick. So we're going to say acceleration. The name is going to be one armed load balancer. The IP address is going to be 172.29.1.254 and the pool will be one arm load balancer pool, which is what we want to have. Click on add. Why does that show up that way? I'm actually a little bit surprised because it shouldn't show up that way. If I jump back over here to this ESG and look at load balancer and look at the virtual servers. Oh, I guess it's right. But why is that not triggering. I'm actually a little surprised. Interesting pools. Oh, I'm in the wrong load balancer. Let me jump onto this guy again. Load balancer, pools, one arm load balancer. Edit. Make sure that everything's connected. Not doing any monitoring at this moment. M members, monitor port 80. Okay, so everything's looking good there. It is enabled. Application profiles, not doing anything crazy there. Pool one. So I can ping it from here, right? I can, I can definitely ping the IP address which is what I want to do. And I should have connections going through. Which is why I'm a little surprised. Oh wait, I did have connections coming through. Inactive connections. So let's try that one more time. Oh, you know what? I bet you I know. Uh, I think I might know why. Because I have load balancing working on another ESG, I wonder if that's why it's giving me inconclusive results. 
So let me come over here and just disable the load balancer. That should turn off the feature on the first ESG and now it's turned off there. Let me try that one again and see if that'll work. Because you're pointing to this IP address here, it should point, and if I come back over here to this guy and hit the up arrow, yeah, it's 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 definitely trying. The one thing that I did differently on the virtual servers is I did the transparent option. Was that done here? No, I think that was done underneath the, the pool. Let me go edit the pool. It turn Transparent is disabled. Round robin. Members. Interesting. I'm not sure why that's not working because it worked the last time I tested this. Transparent is disabled. Oh, so it's the wrong ESG. I'm still looking at the wrong one. So load balancer, pool, Transparent is enabled. Let me go over here and edit that and turn transparent off. Maybe that'll give me a little bit of a better option here. So that's fixed there. Let me go back over here to, I don't think it's, oh, and magically that worked. So if I come over here and I hit the up arrow, we're gonna have an active connection coming inbound. If I open up this guy again, and open up another tab and do 172.29. Get that connection going here. Let's open this up. And we have two active connections, which is good. So apparently transparent wasn't gonna work for whatever reason, not sure why, but we have operational connectivity to our topology and our, you know, and everything's working. Not sure why inact or why transparent's not working. I'll have to go back and double check that config. But as we can see, everything's working with the one arm load balancer and we're happy. So I'm actually gonna jump over here to this VM and I'm gonna hit the up arrow and run this again. And we can see that everything's coming in from 172.29.1.254, everybody's happy. So that means things are working the way that they're, we're expecting them to and that's one arm load balancing. The cool thing about this is I feel like the one arm load balancer is more efficient in having more devices spread out and doing different, uh, re doing running different services versus putting all of your services on a single ESG, using one ESG as your routing component and then having other ESG spread among the different devices that you have, to me gives you more flexibility. You don't have to load up one box to do everything. Obviously here on a lap doesn't really make much of a difference, but to me this makes more sense to have the diversity in your environment and things like that. So with that being said, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video and I will catch all of you in the next video.